Lord, keep me day by day in a pure and perfect way. I want to live. I want to live on in a building I made by hand. Oh no, Lord, keep me day by day in a pure and perfect and perfect way. Cause I want to live, Lord, Lord, I want, I want to live on. Oh no, in a building not made. Me by hand Oh Lord Jesus Oh I'm just a, a stranger here Oh traveling through This old barren, barren land Oh Lord I know there's a building, a building somewhere, oh, and it's building not made by hand. Oh, 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 Lord, keep me day by day. Oh, in a pure and a perfect, perfect way. Because I want to live, Lord Jesus, I want to live on, oh, in the building I made it, oh, by hand, oh, oh, in the building I made it, oh, by hand, oh, oh, Jesus, oh, I got a building, in a building I made it, oh, by by hand, oh, I got another building in a building not made by hand. Oh, 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 oh not made by hand. Grace and peace unto you. I bring you greetings from the non-denominational Pentecostal Holiness Church in James City, where our pastor is Bishop Wallace Grimes, his lovely lady, First Lady Jennifer Grimes. Amen. We thank God for this wonderful opportunity to declare his word. If you would turn with me um, to John 4, chapter 4, verse 46, and it reads, it says, So Jesus came again into Canaan of Galilee, where he made his water wine, and there was a certain nobleman whose son was sick at Caparium. And when he heard that Jesus was come out of Judea into Galilee, he went unto him and besought him that he would come down and heal his son. And he was at the point of death. Then said Jesus unto him, Except ye see signs and wonders, ye will not believe. The nobleman said unto him, Sir, come down 
or my child will die. And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy son liveth. And the man believed the word that Jesus had spoken unto him. And he went his way. And as he was now going down, his servants met him and told him, saying, Thy son liveth. And Father, we thank you for this word. We thank you for this opportunity to declare your word, God. And we pray now that you would uh, soak me up in your anointing, God, and bring me out at this time, God. And God, and anoint my lips of clay to speak your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Jesus at this time had walked the, the earth. He had just came on the scene. And so now, here it is. He has performed miracles. And you know how it is when you people see something that's exciting, they want to latch on and, and, and jump onto it. So for a quick subject, grab hold to your faith. When you're driving a car, you first learn, you're beginning on driving a car, you first starting, you learn how to drive and your hands are at a 10-2 position. So your hands are there, so when you further along as you're going on in your driving career, you take your hands off the wheel, you drive with one hand. You're more relaxed, you, you feel more relaxed. But an accident happened. You have an accident or a tire blow out. And in that time, either you're gonna put your hands on the wheel or you're gonna catch the wheel, or you're gonna take your hands off. You're gonna let your hands go. You may holler Jesus, you may cry out for help, whatever the circumstances may be at that time. So as our journey in salvation, we, when we first get saved, we are so excited. We are ready to run and jump and ready to do anything. We're ready to save the world for Jesus. But then when we get more relaxed and we go and we've been in this thing for a little while and we've been saved now for a little while, we get a little relaxed. But then the journey of life comes, situations of life take place. And once these situations take place, we now either we're going to latch hold and grab hold onto what we have been learning and what we have what we have learned about Jesus and what we have learned about God, or we take the matters into our own hands. And then we either we want to do what we feel that's best for us at the time, or we're going to just go and do what we need to do. We want to either go to our old habits, our our past nature. This passage of scripture displays the action of Jesus speaking a miracle. It displays a man accepting a miracle and healing for the son through and from the mouth of Jesus. See, these verses show an example of faith. Faith is a complete belief or trust in someone or something. Hebrews 11, we are familiar with Hebrews 11, one, 11 and 1 states that now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Then a little further down, it says in Hebrews 11 and 6, it says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him for that for he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. If we do not believe and act on God's word, how can we believe God's word? In order to believe something, we must trust it. So if we do not trust God's word, if we don't believe his word, then we do not. We will not trust in his word. Faith is our belief system. So now. We can't believe the news. We can't put our faith in the news. We can't put our faith in other people's opinions. If we have faith and we believe in the power of God and we believe in what his word says, then we cannot weigh and, and put our direct thought and our opinions and, and our concern directly on what is being put in front of us. Because the Lord has placed people in our lives and you know, we have the elderly that, you know, we're, that they're enduring these situations that we are, are embarked upon. They may not have family members. They may not have friends. But there are some people who just want to come out and be a blessing. So we, the Lord has placed people in our paths 
to assist. So we do not have to be fearful to think that we're not going to make it or we're not going to overcome because we're going to make it. But you, we, the Lord has touched people's hearts to, to go grocery shopping for someone, to, to, to come to their house and maybe cook for them Lord, or, or to cook a meal and send it to them. And this time we cannot be fearful because we have to still be there for our loved one and show love. And we cannot be fearful because God will not have us to be fearful. So now here it is, the man here, he, he came to Jesus and he's requesting Jesus to heal his son because his son is going to die. And Jesus said, you will not believe unless you see signs and wonders. The man, this man was desperate. The noble man was very desperate. So at this time, he says, you know, I believe this man was saying, you know, I, I don't care about the signs. I believe this man said, I don't care about the wonders. I just need you to come down, Lord, and heal my son. But so Jesus spoke this man's healing. He spoke this young man's healing and his father took it. He used, he took, he believed it. And see, the scripture said that he believed what Jesus said. And because he believed what he said, his son was made whole. Now, if it was us, if it was us, some of us would, we would be in, we would ask the Lord to come and Lord, I need you to heal my daughter. Lord, I need you to heal my son. Lord, my mom is at the house sick and I need you to heal my mom. And Lord, I need you to come and heal my mom. But, be, but the Lord, instead, if the Lord say, no, you need me to see, show you signs and wonders. You need to see this. But instead, we would probably, we've done missed, I would miss the healing because we would want him to come. We want him to do it the way we want him to do it. We would want him to come and lay hands. We would want him to come and touch. We would want him to come in our house and sit with him sit with us and, 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 and lay hands and pray. And he, we would want him to do that for us. We would want him to perform the healing the way that we would want him to perform it. So we would, be, we would have missed out on God because of the way we wanted it done. So, but this man, he just believed in the chaos of his life. In the chaotic moment, I can imagine this man was going through because his son was going to die, but he was not fearful. He, he dismantled his fear. He went to him because he knew what he could have went to Jesus because he knew what Jesus could do. And he went to him because he had faith enough to know that if he performed these miracles before, he could heal his son. So when in situations in our lives, as we're going through this pandemic that we're going through and we are dealing with this the best we know how, and a lot of people are losing jobs and, and would, they had different changes in their household, their own unemployment, or they're being laid off from work. And so therefore, we don't have money in the home. Finances are not coming through. So therefore, are we going to believe that he is going to make a way? Are we going to believe that he is going to do exactly what he said in his word? He said he will supply all our needs. Are we going to believe that he's going to supply the needs? Although things sometimes do not feel well. So are we going to grab hold to that steering wheel of faith? Are we going to grab hold to faith? Or are we going to go and do what makes us feel good? Are we going to self-medicate? Are we going to go and, 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 tuck and take to the bottle? Are we going to do these things to make ourselves feel better for the moment? Because once it's all over, the problem will still be there. But when we have and grab hope to faith, we will know that that God is going to be with us. And we will know even though it doesn't feel well, even though it doesn't look good, but God is going to be with us. So now here we are. We know all these situations is happening. People are sick and they're dying. So therefore, fear takes us. So now we have the power in our mouth, the same way that Jesus spoke to heal that son. Then the noble man's son, the same way that he can speak, the same way that he can speak, we can speak. And so we have the power to speak over our families. We have the power to decree and declare 
our family will be healed. We have the power to decree and declare that my family, that we plead the blood of our family, that no one or nothing that can come and, 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 and no sickness, no disease can come and kill my family. No, in Psalms 91, it says that no plague can come to my dwelling. Now, if, 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 if it's already there, the word is already there, we have to learn how to grab hold to what it is being said, what is written. We have to exercise our faith. We have to speak what Job 22 and 28 says, and it says that thou shalt also decree a thing, and it shall be established unto thee, and the light shall shine upon thy ways. What, a, what does that mean? We have the power in our mouth to put things in the atmosphere. We have the power, even though, yes, they said you have to wear your mask and you have to wear your gloves. You need to protect yourself. Wash your hands. You gonna, you need to do those things. But in the midst of doing those things, you got to grab hold to the faith and then know that and speak into the atmosphere. I shall not be sick. I shall be covered when I go into the grocery store. I shall be able to make it. We cannot have fear and still have faith. We only can have one or the other. But now, although we're in the midst of this, but we have to be determined to hold out until the end. The old saints said all the time, I'll sing the song all the time, I am determined to hold out to the end. So we must be determined and to walk in our walk with him. We cannot falter. We have to exercise 1 Corinthians 15 and 58, and it says we must be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain. So we must push. We must push until the end. Therefore, we, myself and personally, I could not be ex as, as afraid and fearful of this disease. Although I do what the precautions are. I do, I make the, the, the natural precautions and do what they ask. But I could not be fearful and panic and go through and shut down because I have put too much time in. I have told the Lord I believe his word. I come to church and I give God praise and I, I give God praise in my home. I love on the Lord. I give him my time. So therefore, if I would be fearful and panic in this season and cut and just say, you know what, I give up and I throw in the towel, then I have faltered and given up on God. But we got to push through and be determined like the woman with the issue of blood. She went through. We don't know how long this pandemic is going to be. But the woman with the issue of blood had was in her situation for 12 years, 12 long years, and she bled. But she knew that Jesus was coming through the crowd. And when she went, when Jesus come through the crowd, she went to him and she didn't need him to, to say anything to her. She didn't need him to lay his hands on, 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 on her. Only thing she wanted to do was just touch him. And when she when she touched him, the virtue went out and she was healed immediately. So therefore, all thing we got to do is just be able to take our faith and lift up our faith and know that God is with us and he will never leave us. He will never forsake us. And therefore he won't leave us and he's not going to forget about us. So we got to learn and to, to, to know that he will be with us. And even in this, we just got to grab hold. We just got to grab hold to our faith. Don't let that steering wheel go. Grab hold to our faith. So now, Jesus is calling us. He is calling us. So now it's time for us to trust in him. Stop saying we're trying to trust him. Don't say we're trying. Just trust him. And when you say that you, when I say trying to trust him, that means we're not fully trusting him. I know it, but we do this, but. They're saying this, but, no but. God is a healer. God is a deliverer. I will walk in it. 
I decree and declare when I go and get out my car, no germs is going to overtake me. I decree and declare when I go into a store, no germs, no bacteria, nothing will harm me. I will be fine. Yes, you take the precautions, but I'm going to be okay. Don't be worried. Don't be scared. You must believe his word. We cannot be afraid of this life. Romans 10 and 17 says, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So once we hear this word and, and, Psalms, and Psalms 121 that says that I will lift up my eyes unto the hills, which cometh my help. So if we, all our help and we know that our help comes from the Lord, then we and we hear this word. So therefore, we got to exercise this word that know that my help, it comes from God. So I, 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 when I walk out, he's already there because he's my help. He's walking beside me. So we cannot be fearful because Second Timothy 1 and 7, it says that God has not given us a spirit of fear. But power and see when you put a but in us in a sentence, it cancels out the first part of the sentence. It said he has not given it to us, but so therefore, if he didn't give it to us, then we got power. So that cancel it out. Don't worry about the fear. The fear is does not is not supposed to exist because we have power and we have a sound mind. So the word teaches us how to overcome our fear and it shows us how to love and be sound mounted. So I just encourage you today to, to keep Isaiah 23 and 26 and 3 in your spirit and keep it before you. And it said that he will keep you in perfect peace if you keep your mind stayed on him. So keep your mind, keep your mind on him. Grab hold to your faith that you have all these many years that you have endured and going to church, hearing the word of God. Now is the time for you to grab hold to your faith. Amen. Now let us pray, Father. Now, Lord, we pray now, Father, that here is your people, Father, that you are looking down on, God. You're with us, Lord, and we thank you right now. Lord, that, that person, that daughter, that son, God, that is, that's facing unemployment, God, that, that is facing um, death in their family, the bereavement in their family. Lord, right now, in the name of Jesus, and Lord, we pray that you will Touch their spirit, touch their minds, touch their hearts. God, to condition them to go through at this time. Lord, put people in their place, in their path, in their path, God, that will help them and that will lead and that will guide them. God, that will comfort God in this time. And Lord, we know that you're able to do anything but fail. And right now, Lord, we pray that you will be with them. God, that you will lead and you will guide in the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, I know that you're able to do anything but fail. And Lord, we pray for the man that wants to be saved. God, that you will come into their heart and come into their spirit. Rest, rule, and abide in them now. And Lord, we know that you're able to do it. And we call on you now in Jesus' name. Amen. UPHC Church Family and Friends. Your tithes and offerings and also donations can be sent by way of Cash App, PayPal, payment methods, or in the description. Join us for relevant biblical studies with informative topics via lectures and transforming teachings streaming every Wednesday night, 7 p.m. Have a blessed week. Folks without homes in the street. Drug habits, some say they just can't be muggers and robbers. No place seems to be safe, but it could be my protection. Every
As viewed here today, McAfee Tech is here for all your technical needs. Please contact us at 252-349-0180.